people think, oh, the more light, the better. It's not. It's the opposite. Right? And maybe you have a backlight that's just doing a little bit of light on the hair. A lot of times you set it up and you get rid of it. Right? And then you have the fill light, which could be on either side, and that's maybe lighting the shoulders or the backdrop a little bit. And sometimes what you do with that is you, you use it almost like um, a floor light that lights up so those, those, that plastic I've shown you there, it gives it a little bit of a glow. You can have many more lights, but you, you can do all kinds of things with just three lights. Right? So, I don't know if we can control the lights enough in here. It's nice that there's no windows, because your ideal room is a room with no windows. Right? Or that you can blacken the windows. I know you're going to think about, you walk into a room, it's beautiful, you got the sun pouring in, and it really looks nice. A person sits down on the, on the couch or a chair, and you see that beautiful light coming in. What's the issue? Natural light betrays you. Pardon? Natural light will always betray you. It will always betray you, yes. <laughs> Why? Because it moves. Because it moves. Oh. Right? So a quick, a quick interview, down and dirty, man on the street, you know, we're just going to catch somebody and they act that kind of film, fine. Get some nice light, move them around to get some nice light. An hour long considered interview with somebody, you're going to get screwed. Right? And then you'll have no option. Then they'll be in shadow. You won't be able to cut things together. So you want control. Make it look like natural light. Make it look like sun is coming in from the window. So you start with a dark room. And you turn on your key light. And then you start to fill around it. Right? Don't go the other way around. And don't try to light the room with the fluorescent lights on. Because right? you've got different color temperatures, you're not going to be able to figure it out. Use a monitor. Don't rely on the camera. So Ian's going to set you up with a, a monitor. Hope we have time for that. <laughs> yeah, for nothing. You know, the kids that have nothing to do with that. So and, we were, and, and, and other people have heard about that. Because he's been around for a while. And I've talked to him. I've interviewed him just to get his opinion on different films. Oh, sure. Times. Okay. I've gotten to know him for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I've always liked his movies, too. Oh, definitely. I think that's great. I'll try to get <laughs> a, a different f-stop on the other side of his mm -hmm. face. Right now it's still too bright on his left side. Okay. That's really, it's really a trick yeah. to, to do that. So Partly it could possibly be because that, 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 that thing all the way uh, softbox or Chimera is oh, too yeah, big. That's, that's good. Yeah. Be right which, there. So which, where's, where's, the, where's the key light here? It's dead on, right? Dead, dead in the center. Yeah. Not the most flattering, right? Where were you and it's really hard to tell when he's going to, right here, I can't tell which one if he's going to really look. Should be looking a little bit to his right, right? Background isn't so bad here, depending if you were, this is for a chemistry professor, maybe it sort of has that lab feeling to it. Okay. Um, look at this one here. Okay. This one. Right. What are they doing? They're not, they're, these are not hot light, right? Yeah. Right? Good, good portraits generally have a, a, a variation in the light from one side to the other. Right. And you're basically doing portrait photography when you're doing an interview. You really should keep that in mind. That would be a nice interview right there. That would be an interesting interview. This is what you're, this is what you're going for. You're trying to think like a photographer.